9.5, the distance from a point to a line in R2 and R3. This is your second last lesson for vectors. And we're going to get right into it here by looking at the distance from a point in R2. So if we declare this point here, Q, X1, Y1, it's not on the line. And I want to know how far this point is from this line. So recalling back what you learned in grade 10, and that is that the distance from the shortest distance from a point to a line is always the perpendicular distance of the or the length of the line segment that is perpendicular to the line from that point. Now back in grade 10, you would probably have found this point of intersection of the lines, and then you would have found the length of the line segment, but we're going to make up a formula for it. So the first thing we're going to do is pick a second point here, P, X0, Y0. So this is all the, um, the work in order to understand what the formula is for it. So what we're going to do is use something we used before, and that is a scalar projection. So here comes the sun shining down. Remember, we looked at it like a shadow. If you want to go back to your lessons on um, vector projections, and you'll see that this makes a shadow here that would be right here if I had a pen that actually, there we go. So this is my scalar projection. So D is the length of the scalar projection. D is the length of the scalar projection. Let's see if we can get this. Ooh. Scalar projection. Am I still on the page? Can you still see it? Yes, okay. So of PQ on, we call that P right there. So PQ on M. So the, um, the scalar projection, if you recall the cute little form or the formula that we had, we said, um, vector A on vector B, we should have a vector line on that, is equal to the magnitude of A dotted with B divided by the magnitude of B. So in this case, our length PQ, so PQ is going to be, let's write that out, what is PQ? PQ is going to be, remember we did Q minus P, so we have X1 minus X sub 0, and y sub 1 minus y sub 0. And our normal, as you recall from the equation of the line, would be a, b. So we have a, b for our normal. So if we go back to the distance equation now here, we're going to say, well, that means that the distance is going to be equal to the magnitude of pq dotted with the normal over the magnitude of the normal. And so if we plug in PQ here, we would have X1 minus X0. Um, I didn't want to put a comma there, a bracket. Ah, got little brackets, little eraser here. So X1 minus X0 is magnitude. And then we have Y1 minus Y0. And we're dotting that with the normal, which of course is a, b, and the magnitude of it. And the magnitude of n is a magnitude of a, b. Okay, so if we dot this up here, we would have, well, that's just the magnitude of a times x1 minus x0 plus b times y1 minus y0, the magnitude of that, and all over the square root. Remember how to find the magnitude, so a squared plus b squared. So taking it off to the side here for a minute, we can say that since the point p, x0, y0 is on the line Okay, it's on this line right here. So that means it has to satisfy this equation. So that means that um, AX0 plus BY0 
plus c has to be equal to 0. And that means that c is going to be equal to the negative of ax0 plus by0. So in other words, I just put them both. They both went over to this side, became negative, and I factored out a negative. So that's what c is equal to. And if you look here, um, what we have is ax1 plus bx ax1 plus by1. Let's expand that first so you can see what I'm talking about. So we have ax1, still the magnitude, ax1 plus by1 minus ax0 plus, well, just a second here. We're going to put a bracket here because it's minus ax0 minus by0. So again, I factor out that negative one and that's all over the square root of a squared plus b squared. And I think I'm off the page for you, aren't I? Okay, so and now you can see that this part of the equation here, that's just equal to c. So the formula for the distance, and maybe this is all you really wanted to learn, What's the formula, my students would say? Why do we have to learn all this process? Well, the important thing is that if you ever go into a mathematical program, you're going to have to understand and how to use proofs. So it's a little lesson in a proof here for you. So there we go. And there's the formula that we're going to use. So the distance in two space here is going to be equal to this, and I'm going to make the little squiggly line over it because I can't draw a straight, straight one. This is the nice big equal sign here. Okay, so let's use that formula and do a couple of examples, some a little different. And let's get this off the plate page here for you. So the first one says, find the distance from the point 2, 3 to the line 3x plus 4y equals 6. Now, remember that this is not C, it's going to be the negative of it. So the first thing you should really do is make sure you have it in the proper standard form. So you can see your A, B, and C. So A is going to be 3, B is going to be equal to 4, and C is going to be equal to minus 6. The point gives me the X and Y values, obviously. So I have X is 2 and Y is 3. And then I just need to have remembered the distance formula. Now, some teachers are really nice, like me, and I would have given you this formula. Although most people, by the time you've finished your homework and you've written it out a few times, you pretty much have it nailed. Also, even if you're given formulas on a test, you have to understand which one to use and why you're using it. Okay, so there's my distance formula. All I have to do now is plug in the values. So I have... 3 times 2 plus 4 times 3 uh, minus 6. And remember we're doing absolute values because it has to be a positive distance. We can't have any negative numbers. Over a squared plus b squared, so that's 3 squared plus 4 squared. And that's going to give me 6 plus 12 is 18 minus 6 is 12. That's going to be 12 over the square root of 25, which is 5. So, um, you should have a concluding statement, therefore the distance, I'm not going to write it all out, is 12 over 5. And you should say something like units after you say a distance length. Okay, number two, it says find the distance from the origin to this line. Okay, so we have a couple of issues because this isn't in the Cartesian form. And our point xy is going to be 0, 0, right? Because we know that's what the origin is called. So we want to change this into Cartesian form. Do you remember how to do that? So the first thing you're going to do is write out the symmetric equations. So x is minus 4 minus 3t and um, y equals 2 plus 4t. And then you're going to solve for t, right? So we have x plus 4 over minus 3 is going to be equal to y minus 2 divided by 4. And then you cross multiply and you get 4x plus 16 equals minus 3y plus 6. Bring it all to one side. 
4x plus 3y uh, plus 10 is equal to 0. So now I have my a, b, c. And I'm off to the races here. So I can say, well, because x is 0 and y is 0, this equation up here, if x is 0 and y is 0, all I'm left with is the absolute value of c over the magnitude of a, b. So that's my equation. So um, if using the origin, the distance will become the magnitude of c over the square root of a squared plus b squared. And in this case, my c is positive 10. And I have 4 squared plus 3 squared square root. And that's going to give me 10 over 5, which is 2. So therefore, 2 units. Okay, so that's, um, that's, doing, that's doing some straightforward ones where we have the... Um, you have to change this. So we've done a, like a really simple example where we have A, B, C, X, Y. One where you have to find the Cartesian form of the line first. And one where we have to, uh, and also using the origin. Okay, so the last one we're going to do before we hit the R3s is a distance between two lines when you're giving it in this format. So if you take a look at line 1, the normal for this is going to be 3, 4. And the normal for line 2 is 6, 8. And that should ring a little bell for you right away. And you should be saying, oh, lines are parallel. Parallel. Therefore, lines are parallel. Sometimes it's hard to talk and write at the same time, especially when you're 60 some years old. Okay, so we know they're parallel lines. So if I have two parallel lines like this, I want to know how far apart they are. I'm going to need to pick a point on one of the lines. So let's say we pick a point on L1. So that's what I'm going to write. Find a point on L1. So if I set x equal to 0, which would be a nice easy one to do, set x equal to 0, and then I get y is equal to 2. So 0, 2 is a point, a point on L1. Okay, and now the second thing I need to do is I'm going to use L2. Um, I'm going to use the A, B, and C from L2 in order to find the... Um, the distance. So you can't use the same, you can't pick a point on this line and then try to use A, B, C here because you're going to get a distance of zero because obviously your point is on the line, right? So now you use the second, so you use second line. So I have um, six, eight for my normal. So I'll just say A is equal to six, B is equal to eight, c is equal to minus 7, and my normal, of course, is 6, 8. So we're going to plug that into our equation here. So the distance is going to be 6, or the magnitude of 6 times 0. I better put it uh, like this, because you might think that's dot product or something, which it isn't. And 8 times 2, so a, x, b, y, c, the absolute value of that all over the square root of 6 squared plus 8 squared. And that's going to give you 16 minus 7 is 9. And this is going to be 100. Square root of 100 is 10. So therefore, 9 tenths units apart. So that's the R2 ones. Now we're going to take a look at R3 lines. So we have, um, in R3, we have, I wrote out a lot of stuff here because I thought it would just take way too long for me to write this and make it neat at the same time. So in R3, the lines are not in the form ax plus by plus c equals zero, right? We have, we have lines like, um, like this. So we had a point plus some multiple, we have 
you know, the Cartesian equations. We don't have Cartesian equations, we have vector equations for the lines. Okay, so looking at this in triangle PQR, you would say the sine of theta is d over qp. So d equals qp sine theta. Now also going back, you might want to look back in your notes about the equation for a cross product, but we know that m cross qp equals m qp sine theta. So m cross qp is m times d because d is qp sine theta, right? This was this was this. So that gives me d being m cross qp divide the magnet by the magnitude of m. So this is the distance from p, so d is the distance from p to the line, where q is a given point on the line, p is any point whose coordinates are known, and m is the direction vector of the line. So that's just describing everything we're doing here. So question something like this, it says find the distance from this point to this line. Okay, so the first thing we need to know is QP. So this is our P here, right? This is P. There's three of them, not just one. So QP. Remember how to find QP? Oh, way back when we did that. So that's P minus Q. So it's going to be 3 minus 6, minus 2 minus 3, and 0 minus minus 1 is 0 plus 1. And that's going to give me minus 3, minus 5, and 1. So that's my QP. And what is my direction vector? The direction vector is given right there. You don't even have to think. 4, 3, minus 2. So now we have to do a little bit of thinking because we need to do the cross product of M and QP. So M cross QP. I'm going to do that right here. So M is 4, 3, minus 2, 4, 3, minus 2, and QP is minus 3, minus 5, 1, minus 3, minus 5, 1. Stroke out the outside, make your crosses, and do your calculation. So M cross QP is equal to, so we have 3, and then we have um, 3, plus minus 10, or minus plus 10, so 3 minus 10, and we have, that's going to be my x coordinate, maybe I'll make it big brackets like this, and then I have, um, I have 6, I'm doing 6 minus 4, and my z is going to be minus 20 plus 9. And that's really squeezing it out here, isn't it? I have so much room on this page. Okay, so that's going to leave me with minus 7, 2, and minus 11. Okay, so we've done the cross product. We're going to use our formula. So D equals the magnitude of the cross products over the magnitude of M. Very easy to do. Okay, so the cross product we already said was, um, we want the magnitude though of minus 7, 2, minus 11 over the magnitude of m, which was 4, 3, minus 2. And you know how to find the magnitudes, you just, I'm going to put it over here. I hate doing that though. Two equal signs on one line, ooh. So this is all going to be the square root, right? They're both square roots. So I'm going to do 7 squared is 49. 2 squared is 4. 11 squared is 121. And in the denominator, I have 16 plus 9 plus 4. That's going to give me 53. 63 and 2 is 65. Square root of 65 divided by 25 plus 4 is 29. Did I do that right? 49 and 4 is 53 and 121. I thought I lost the number there. Okay, let's fix that up right now. For somebody says, Miss, you made a mistake. Uh, 125. 125 and 49. That's 14. Carry the 137. 174. 
174 over 25 and 4 is 29. And that just happens to go into that six times. So I have the square root of 6. Okay, so that's your lesson. Second last lesson for vectors. Must be getting so excited to be almost done this. And if this is um, the first part of the textbook that you're doing, you still have calculus to learn, but hey, that's easy. Hope you have a great day and hope you've learned something from this little lesson. One more vector lesson to go. Bye for now.